Howdy there. So last night, I saw for the second time The Cave of Forgotten Dreams. And it's amazing. Uh, I've got to give it a 10. You know, I've got to give it a 10. Uh, it's about a cave of forgotten dreams. Uh, three explorers, um, amateur explorers. Uh, well, I don't know maybe about amateur, but, you know, hobbyists, I don't know, not professionals. In 1994, while hiking, caving, exploring in the south of France, uh, feel an air current coming out of a uh, hole in the wall. And they shimmy through this hole in a rock wall and explore a newfound and undiscovered cave. And in that cave are perfectly preserved wall paintings, cave paintings, that date back to as late as 35,000 years ago. And no earlier than like 23,000 years. So the youngest, freshest paintings there, 23,000 years old, are twice as old as anything else we know. So that's what it's about. Uh, it's tremendous. It's tremendous. Uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, you basically get into the cave and then look at the cave for an hour and a half. I mean, we get to go to other places. Uh, we get to go to another um, cave finding in Germany. Uh, and, that well, I guess that's pretty much it. But we're basically in that cave. And we're just looking at those paintings for an hour and a half. And we're thinking about those paintings for an hour and a half. And what they mean. Uh, it, uh, it's edited, uh, written, uh, produced, and directed by Werner Herzog. Uh, Werner Herzog, to me, has, in the last five years, become one of the most important directors working. Uh, I'm tempted to say that I feel that he's uh, the third most influential director alive. Uh, my top three, really quickly, uh, I think Hayao Miyazaki is the most influential, greatest living director, period. Uh, second, I'd have to go for Scorsese. Uh, he's the American master. Um, third, I'd have to, you know, say Werner. I think he's, he, at least in my opinion, he, he's made two films in the last ten years that, for lack of a better phrase, have changed my life. Uh, actually, three films, if I really think about it. Uh, so, I've got to give him props. And... I talked about in my first review, I can't remember if I gave it a 9 or a 10, I'm definitely going a 10 here, uh, that maybe that, you know, anyone could have done this. You know, he just got the scoop uh, that anyone with like a film school graduate could, you know, with a basic knowledge of lighting would be able to do something like this. As I sat there watching it last night, I thought that maybe I'm wrong, you know, because the cave and the art can technically be taken in like that. I mean, you could walk into the cave and walk out five minutes later and say, all right, you know, I went and I saw that art. Um, I saw it. It's done. Uh, but here, should you do that? No. I don't know how you're going to grasp it. You know, you should take a whole day to stare at it. Uh, but it can be done. You can go in, look at it, and be done. Uh, 
Uh, so maybe it's not that easy to make a 90 minute film about something that can be experienced in a moment. Uh, perhaps I did not appreciate that fully the first go around. Um, I saw this in 2D. It's on a very limited amount of screens now in the world. Uh, and the theater I went to did not have 3D capabilities. The film was shot in 3D with 3D cameras and 3D film, uh, unlike 98% of the other movies out there in 3D. Did I miss the 3D? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, was it totally necessary? Maybe not, because you still get it. You still get to see the art. Uh, you still get to experience the art, but I'll tell you what, in that 3D, um, I mean, you could, it's like you could reach out and touch the wall and feel the texture. I mean, the rock was like there, and it looked perfect. Now with it converted to 2D, there was one, there was like a visual, like, like a refresher. I don't know. I can't really describe it, but there was something visual that I didn't, that I know wasn't there in 3D. And that, well, basically, I've never seen a 3D film converted to 2D. So maybe that happens. Uh, I don't know. The picture was still gorgeous, and again, the art comes through. Uh, but in 3D, it was it was made for 3D, and there is a difference. Again, just, you can see, you can, again, you can practically feel it in 3D. 2D, a slightly less rewarding experience, but still you get the point. And the point is, I mean, that's the, the point is the whole point. Uh... He makes uh, a, a claim that, and this is what I'm, you know, I'm putting words in Herzog's mouth here, but this is what I think some points that's being made by this film. Uh, well, one, he comes right out and says that, again, some of this art is 35,000 years old, and art doesn't really change until Pablo Picasso, which, when was that? Uh, the early 1900s? So, <laughs> you know, think about that. That the human species, uh, you know, at 35,000 years old, uh, or years ago, was doing something that really wouldn't be improved upon for... <laughs> A millennia uh, and where were we before that you know and the film another point I think it makes is one I think they really want to present this as the birth of art you know this is again our oldest current example of human culture the human soul. Um, so I think, one, he wants this to be like, again, the invention of art, the first proof of art. Uh, and also, since they are related, the birth of religion. Uh, there is some evidence that they had made a uh, temple a shrine of some kind uh, at this location in this cave uh, and he comes right out and says that is this the birthplace of the human soul uh, they also find instruments you know it seems that art and culture uh, can go back 35,000 years ago to this cave in the south of France and it also paints a picture of a snapshot of that time about how Europe and where they were located was covered by a 9,000 foot thick glacier. And uh, 
at the time of humans, uh, you've got woolly mammoths, uh, woolly rhinoceros, uh, much larger than average bears, uh, lions that live specifically in caves, bears that live uh, specifically in caves, different types of more massive deer uh, and bison. Uh, all while this incredible, incredibly dangerous primitive almost can't imagine world while that's going on humans are there too we're there too as well as neanderthals so we've got two humanoid species fighting for survival amongst things that you know could you know, that look at humans as nothing. So, again, it's all about thought in this film. And it's all about the idea and what this film makes you feel and what makes you think. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just incredibly important. I mean, maybe it's not beautiful, maybe it's not riveting uh, or action-packed, but I can't think of anything more important to humanity. So I think it's a, uh, it's a very important film. Uh, again, it's almost out of the theaters. It's been out for a while, so I hope you saw it. Um, definitely rent it, of course. Um, you've got to see it uh, because you will never be able to see the actual thing. And I mean literally. They're building a theme park but it's a theme park they're replicating it they're building an exact replica of the cave and the paintings and that's what you're going to tour you will never be able to see the actual thing uh so take the opportunity that alone it, i mean it's a historical document uh it's in, it, it's important uh one of the things that it talks about is that when you were in the cave when you're looking at the paintings, uh, you feel like you were being watched. You feel that you are not alone. And I know that it's weird, but that comes across even when you see it in film. You know, you're seeing it by a third party, really. And yet, you can't help but feel that something else is looking back at you and he makes this really bizarre point at the end by bringing in alligators and albino mutant alligators uh, but looking at those walls looking at the art is basically like looking in a mirror you know you were looking at yourself you were looking at the history of yourself uh, he makes a good point that these people are not trapped in time. You know, they are a part of time. They were a part of history. We, we, you know, can't even imagine. Uh, some of the the art in the in the cave is is five thousand years apart in age. So uh, somebody did something. And they admired it for 5,000 years. And then 5,000 years later, someone comes along and says, okay, now I want to put my mark on it. You know, 5,000 years. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't comprehend it. You know, it, to me, it's overwhelming. Uh, I found it to be a, a very pure emotional experience. Um, I love the film. I think it's... I think you should see it. I hope you saw it. Um, see it as soon as you can. Uh, I'm almost out of time, so I'm wrapping it up. Uh, it's Cave of Forgotten Dreams. Most important film probably of the year. Uh, I don't know. Tree of Life is so good. I can't decide. Two, you know, apples and oranges, really. Uh, anyway, Cave of Forgotten Dream. Gotta give it a 10. Can't help but. All right. Thanks for watching.